So I thought I'd do a review video on the Skyoptic ST 1400mm reflector telescope. And for the price, what you get is not bad. In saying that, there are actually a lot of drawbacks to this thing that you should definitely be aware of. For example, I had to replace all of these bolts in the back. The ones that came with it weren't long enough to reach the little um, pushing section behind the mirror and the locking nuts that actually um, pull it back um, were also not long enough. It's just they were absolutely, all of them were useless. I had to replace all six of them. Um, the other problem, the finder scope doesn't actually you can't actually get it to be aligned with the telescope. I had to fold some paper just to get the right height. I think I've raised it about a millimeter at the back. You have to unbolt the mount, slide a millimeter's worth of stuff in there. I'm going to 3D print something to permanently go in there. But um, yeah, this cannot possibly, you end up maxing out these thumb screws and you don't, you can't line this up with the telescope at all unless you put something under here. The other thing that is a massive, massive problem is this equatorial mount. So <clears throat> the worm gear that's inside of here, first of all, doesn't line up with the main gear that's inside of here. So when you're turning this, it's actually gripping the very edge of the worm gear. And it's like using, it's putting a lot of force through that worm gear and it's going to wear it out super quickly. I had to put a little bit of cardboard. Um, just in here again to get the measurement. I'll have to measure that properly in 3D print a shim to go in there. And the same thing goes for this mount here. The worm gear just does not line up with the main gear. So expect to take that apart. And they've got these crappy little, they're like six and a half millimeter hex head bolts that are terrible. And because this whole mount is aluminium and when it, whoever put this in obviously over tightened it and stripped the thread out of this one so i can't i'm gonna have to um i'm gonna have to uh tap that one again with like a, a bigger bolt but yeah so this one it's much smoother now oh, i've only put this on here to make it quicker i can do it two-handed to test the actual um the binding because the other thing which is probably the worst thing is the main gear that's in here is not centered on its axis. It's actually slightly offset. I don't know by how much, but it just means that if you want a smooth action, you'll get it until you get 180 degrees. And once this thing is, once the telescope's turned around 180 degrees, and that includes if you loosen off this and spin the telescope around, okay, it holds the gear position on the main gear here it just releases the hub from this just releases the hub from the mount and then but the gears are still in the same spot as they were in before so even if you tried to make it so that it would never see the other side of the main gear you would have to not touch this ever so you couldn't reposition it quickly because as soon as you did that now you've you've just screwed yourself so now you're gonna have to wind it you'll end up winding it back into position and you'll be on the other side of this main gear and eventually it will bind with the worm gear so it's true for this one as well as this one and this one is heaps worse because it's much much bigger so the, this main gear being slightly off the axis will push hard into this worm gear when it's in um in a certain orientation and there is absolutely nothing you can do about that of yeah there's nothing you can do about it what you have to do is loosen off the worm gear because i ended up snapping this off because i just i just couldn't turn it this was on this one here and as i was turning it, it bound and i'm t turning it trying to see trying to keep the moon in in um in position and as i've turned it it's just snapped the handle off the shaft because it was it was bound it was bound up so hard so the only way to fix this problem is to loosen off these Oops, to loosen off these bolts here. Come on, focus. To loosen off this bolt here. There we go. Loosen off this bolt here and this bolt here and slide this away from the main gear so the worm gear is no longer binding onto it. 
The problem is, once you turn this around the other way, you get a ton of lashback. The amount of lashback that you get, look at that, is crazy. And I'm pretty sure that's like not even at the worst part. The more you rotate this, the worse the lashback gets. So both of them, both of these have tons of lashback. Like you can see, as you move the telescope, how much it just rocks back and forth. In saying that, this is only $580 Australian. Um, the mirror in the back of here is awesome. Same with the mirror in the secondary mirror. The lenses are actually pretty good. The focuser is not bad. There's no small, there's no fine focus knob on here. You're stuck with the main focus, that's it. Um, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. So if you're gonna get one of these, you are gonna to have to try and fix a bunch of problems that come with it. Um, the other stupid thing is this, <laughs> this hand bolt is in the wrong spot. It should be closer to this because if it, when I took this apart, because to take all of this off, you can't, you know, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. I took this out of the um, main mount and um, this is actually, this is sort of, I don't know how to say it, like it's got a countersunk um, rim and this is hitting the edge of it. So as you tighten this, you will actually, you will actually bite into a 90 degree bit of aluminium because this whole piece of shit is aluminium. You'll bite into the edge of the aluminium and once you try and turn this, you're now scraping along that bite, that bit edge. So yeah, just be careful. This, this equatorial mount is cheap and nasty. Um, yeah, and it's aluminium, keep that in mind. And, and some of these, the profiles on here are just so thin that the tapped thread just strips out very, very easily. So you have to be very careful with how tight you do your bolts. Um, like I said, I didn't, I didn't ruin this one. You came like it. I have, I'm now going to have to, um, the bolt just spins when you try and tighten it. There's nothing you can do. Um, what else? Um, yeah, apart from that, it's pretty good. The main mirror is nice. Um, I don't know how they were actually able to do the maths on this, um, on this parabolic mirror because it's only a 560 millimeter long scope. So 560 mil from there to there, I think, but the focal length is 1400 millimeters and it actually is pretty close to being right. So um, they must've done some funky stuff with this parabolic mirror to get it to, to focus uh, and yeah, actually get the, same, get the right focal length. Uh, like I said, the two lenses that you get is a 25 millimeter and a six and a half millimeter eyepiece. And I would recommend getting a second hand or if you can find a good second hand eyepiece, getting a 40 millimeter. But if not, they're about 50 bucks because that way it does, it is having 1400 millimeter focal length uh, makes it very difficult to, once you found it in here, because once you've solved this problem, finding it in here is not as then easy to going to like a 40 times magnification or whatever the, I can't remember what is it, the, the magnification for this. So you're better off with a 40 millimeter just to find the rough area of the sky you're looking for because you're so zoomed in on a 25 millimeter eyepiece that, you know, finding stuff with this doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna find the exact spot with this. So I recommend getting a 40 millimeter eyepiece. Um, but yeah, if you want something that works out of the box, don't go for this because you cannot collimate this lens, this mirror um, at all with, unless you change the bolts. And to change the bolts, you need to pull it apart, figure out how it's working and then put it back together. Cause you need this one to be long enough and this one to be long enough and they're both different lengths. So. You really need to be careful with what you're doing uh, when you're choosing the bolt length. So make sure you have a good look at it if you do decide to, to change that. 
Um, as you can see, I got the motor mount as well, um, which actually works quite well. The battery, um, the battery holder is, was, ru was rusty, it's like the spring that holds the D six D size batteries in there. So I just got a um, USB power supply, um, like a battery bank and the five volts that comes out of it, I boosted it up to six volts on a little eBay boost converter um, circuit board. And then just, yeah, soldered it onto like a, the original, the original little plug that came with it for the power. So that's one way you can solve that problem. That way you've also got a rechargeable battery. Lithium ions better than buying D cell batteries every time you want to use it. And yeah, um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah, uh, it's hard to recommend, but for the price, it's not bad. But for the price, you gotta, you've gonna, you're gonna have to do some work on it. You definitely, definitely are gonna have to do some work. It's not gonna work out of the box like you would hope. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Cheers.